Anyway, let's move on to lesson T. Let's wrap up today with a little bit of teaching like we always like to do. Of course. Um, driver, Jake, again for me. We talked about fitting drivers. We talked about fitting all clubs last week. Um, the setup over the driver. I just wanted to give a little lesson on this today because there's just an epidemic going on. You you need to hit the driver on the upswing. That's why it's teed up. You're... You play it off your front heel, more or less, ball position, because you want to sweep up on that golf ball. And and I tell people it's like a little underhanded serve in volleyball. Imagine putting the volleyball out in front of you and then swing your trail arm and kind of hit up on it and, and hit that ball with no backspin kind of up over the net. And that's kind of how you're trying to hit a, a golf ball with a driver. But because the ball's forward, I'd say... 80% of the people we work with, all of a sudden the hands go forward up by the ball and the weight kind of goes onto the lead leg. And when those two things happen, you also open up your alignment and you tend to be in a position where you're going to pick the club up and hit down on it. And Wait. I see it. Oh, my God. I, I don't know how many times I saw that this week, but I walked by you yesterday. You were giving a launch session to the guy, yep. and I just whispered to you, set up. Yeah, because totally. I mean, and I know you talked to him after the fit about that, and he was pretty excited when he left here. But to stand over a driver, we want first of all. Here, here's a few little checkpoints. Same posture as an iron, give or take. You can be slightly taller, maybe, but you, so many people we work with crouch over a wedge and then stand up really tall over a driver. Try to maintain the integrity of your body lines. Yeah, one thing I think that is a fair thing to say is that. The reason pros look a little taller over their driver is because the driver inherently stands you up just a little bit yeah. by nature of the angle the club's on. Correct. I don't think that I'm setting up differently over any club, apart from maybe a width of stance yeah, discussion, I, which we'll like have, I'm sure. I'd like to see more. There's but. way too much variance uh, on high handicappers, number one. Number two, width of stance. Let's narrow it down, people. I mean, if you get too wide... The weight will, won't even transfer from leg to leg, and it's hard to rotate and develop speed. So you'll always be hanging back, or for those of you who start on your lead leg, you stay on that leg and yep. hit down. it. I'd like to see the stance narrowed in a general sense, wider than it is for your 5-iron and your hybrid and your 3-wood, but marginally. like like uh, Adjustments in golf are like adjustments to a recipe. They're, they're minute. They're little pinches of this, and, and people tend to pour a whole you know, bucket of, of vanilla in the cookie recipe, if you say vanilla is the secret to the cookie recipe when it comes to golf, just a little wider. Yeah, I think three wood. One, one thing to maybe have people understand why why this is so important or why you should be wider in the first place to understand what you're trying to do here instead of just going as wide as you can. If you listen to our episode from two weeks ago about driver optimization, both in terms of fitting and a little bit of body motion, right? We touched on some of this stuff. And if anyone remembers, or if you go back and listen, you should. It's, 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 I think, really insightful. But your body doesn't really rotate through the ball faster with a driver than an iron. If anything, it rotates a little slower through the golf ball because the stance is wider. So as a general statement, I think people think you need to widen your stance because the swing is faster. The club does move faster because the implement you're using is longer. So the head is going to move faster than it does with an iron. And that means the motion is maybe a little more violent feeling, so a little bit of width does help with that. But the real reason why you widen out your stance is because as you widen your stance, you naturally angle yourself behind the golf ball a little bit more. Your spine angle from face on increases because the width of stance means that when your hands are on the club the same way, your back shoulder drops a touch more and you're angled slightly more Well, it the doesn't have to. This is my point. This is what people aren't doing. If you widen your stance, but you lean on your front leg and, but that's when and you're, address the ball. So you're right let's if you take it. that out of there. But if you start, if you don't do that, if you don't lean on your front leg, you will be angled back more. That's why so optimal angle is one to four what with would an iron you like and four to, to seven see, with a driver. What would you like to see for weight distribution? I don't want to jump around. I want to do this in order. So the first thing we're going to do... Um, is narrow that stance up a little bit, right? Yeah. You want to do that. We're going to maintain posture. Yes, I'm, I, we're not jumping around. What I'm saying is that the point to widening your stance is to angle you back a little bit. So if you're the inside of That's your feet... a point. A little bit more stability, Jake. I think it's unfair to say that with the club swinging 100 mile an hour around you instead of 75 with a wedge, I, I think a little bit of stance widening is 
is for stability. It's not only sure, but it's not only for stability. Okay, is the point weight I'm distribution. Making. Weight distribution. What do you like? Do you like 50-50? Do you like a little more back leg, a little more front leg? 50-50. And I think I think if you look at pressure data for PGA pros on all of our clubs, we actually tend to have a subconscious little bit of pressure on our front foot to feel like we could push off of it. So, you know, if pressure data would suggest 55% onto your front foot. Now, that doesn't mean lean forward into your front foot. There's a little yeah. subconscious push there. I would tell but high handicappers... 52% on your back leg. Yeah, I think Let's that's totally fair. Let's get behind the ball. And what I was going to say is that tells us, if anything, you don't want to lean way back and artificially fake it and wind up 60%, 70% on your back leg, but you should be 50-50, and if you're going to favor one, favor the back leg. A little bit. And spine tilt. You alluded to it with a little wider stance, but this is something people have to pay attention to. It doesn't magically happen is the, the point I was jumping in on there. Just because you widen your stance, you can stay dead vertical. So, so everyone, think about your spine angle or your spine posture line. Straight up and down is 90 degrees. When you hit an iron, we want 92 or 3. We want a little bit of tilt away from the target with your head. With a driver, you know, 5 to 7 degrees. We want more tilt. And if you stand with your weight 50-50 and your stance is only a little wider than it is with your hybrid, and then you tilt back five degrees, and you've got the ball off your front heel, your lead ear is going to be five inches behind the ball. So you're yeah, way behind the ball, which is what we want. The only point I'm making, but you're absolutely right. I agree with everything, except you don't even have to lean back five degrees. If you widen your stance and you have your back hand on the golf club and your hand's in the right spot, you will be tilted back because your, le your back hand is lower than your lead hand. So your back shoulder is lower than your front shoulder, so you're tilted. So the real, to me, I would say just don't lean forward is really the point. If you let yourself stay back and you let yourself angle back, that's all you really need to do in this equation. If you're not, feeling angled back is a good thing. But what you're getting at is that everyone's leaning forward to get their eyes over the ball and get on top of their front foot. And that's really the mistake, isn't it? Or am I wrong? Or are you saying something different? No, fair enough. I, I, I want people, though, to think about tilting back because it's not intuitive for them, and I don't want them to think if they go 50-50 with a little wider stance, it'll just naturally happen. Sure, you that's You need fair. to get them in front of a mirror, you, and you need to look at it and try to increase that tilt. And, and the main reason that's so important, everybody, is you want your front ear about five inches behind that golf ball so that you can hit up at it. Yes. And if you stand on your lead leg, if you lean on that front leg, if you put your hands way forward, your head sneaks forward, and all of a sudden there's a better chance of hitting the ball, not only at the bottom, but on the way down, which you really don't want. And then my last little thing, number five of them all. So we've got posture, we've got width of stance, we've got a little bit of spine tilt. Um, <laughs> the last thing I want you to do is keep your hands more centered. Again, there's a tendency with higher handicappers because the ball is forward to move the hands forward, which not only tends to put the weight on the front leg, but it also opens up your alignment. Yeah, very your true. hands in golf should be just forward of your fly, of your zipper, of your belt buckle. Uh, you don't even have to put your club head right behind the ball. You can have your club head a few inches behind the ball, but try to think of yourself behind it, ready to swing up on it, not addressing it forward in your stance and then having all those bad things that happen to you. And if you set upright, it's amazing how well people can hit their driver. They, you just change the setup, the centeredness, and the tilt a little bit, move those hands back, and all of a sudden there's a better approach into the golf ball. Yeah, another way to put it is, you know, I've seen you do it a lot and I've done it. You set up the wrong way, the way that people are setting up to show them the effect. And I can't believe how bad I hit it when I set up the wrong way. Yeah. No different golf swing. So I, I think that's absolutely nail on the head. And that's why, like you said, the guy yesterday in my, in my fit hit it so much better after we uh, fix the setup. It's just because when you set up the right way, the whole thing works the way it should, more easily at least. It doesn't magically fix your golf swing. There's yeah. still swing work that needs to be done. But I couldn't agree more with all of it. Yeah, so many things in the setup. It's crazy. I'm thinking here, too, another thing that people do a lot is the shoulders hike up. Because they've got the tension because yeah. they really want to hit the driver far. So the, the shoulders come pulling up, which puts tension into the neck muscles, tension into the chest, tension into the back muscles, tension in the upper arms. And, and you know, 
makes the swing a lot more stiff and uh, less fluid, less rhythm. Make sure when you stand over any shot, but mostly a driver, you really lower your shoulders. Get them down where they're supposed to be, you know, even with the bottom of your neck with your collarbone. Your shoulders shouldn't be up by your, your lead ear, and I see that a lot too. People really hoist those arms up in the air a little bit. Yeah. So tension, soften that as well. Tension is not a good thing in sport, right? So if you're if we accept that golf's an athletic endeavor, which I think is a ridiculous thing not to accept, then if you're tense and stiff and trying to just muscle your way into positions, that's probably not the best way to feel loose and flexible and, and have the rotation we're talking about. I think a lot of people, would you say it's fair that a lot of people do that because they're trying to make keep their arms straight and make as wide a swing as possible? Well, that's another fallacy, and, and arm straight. Exactly. Th- that's what I'm getting at. I think, you, I don't know if that's the only reason. Some people just are also tense because they want to hit it good. But yeah. I, I think, you know, the more you tense up your arms and try to keep your arms straight to make a big swing, the more restricted you'll be, the worse your body will work, and, and frankly, the worse you'll hit the driver. Uh, I get in front of a mirror. I think it's an awesome thing to just, you know, uh, we own a golf center. We're making money off people hitting buckets of balls. But I think if people stood in front of a mirror... Uh, screen cap, any pro standing over a golf ball and then try to stand in front of a mirror, do the same thing. Have a little bit of tilt, have a little bit of a look of being behind that ball before you you get ready to swing up and through it and you'll play a lot better. The the, the last little one is, uh, you know, I think most people, the way they swing, will relate back to hockey here in Canada. They kind of set up so that they're going to score along the ice at the left post. Like, they look like they're leaning forward and they're going to swing up and down at it. Yes. And swing. Following, absolutely. And score kind of on the left-hand side of the net along the ice. And what we want them to look like is that they're going to score top right corner, not bottom left corner. Uh, If you look like that over the golf ball, you have a lot better chance of not cutting across it to hit that slice, not hitting down at it. And it gets a lot easier to hit it up in the air. I always love hitting a few for people. I'll stand on one leg and just kind of stay behind it and swing my arms back and through up on it. The ball will jump 175 yards with, without, I'm chatting with them as I'm doing it. And especially ladies who really struggle because they're doing all these things to try to generate some speed but can't. When you see that club just swinging on its own arc and really traveling on the proper path with a relaxed arm swinging motion, it's amazing how far the ball jumps. Like, think about 175 yards. It's almost two football fields. Yeah, like we said when we talked about the driver optimization stuff, right? When you have a driver that's fit well and you hit it the right way, the driver does the work for you. Um, you know, it's... Uh, you just saying that just triggered even understanding that you should be, you know, as you said, scoring top corner or, or for right-handed players, swinging their first base. First baseline, second deck. You upper know, deck, first baseline. I right? couldn't believe it. Yesterday, I had a gentleman come in for a lesson worked with him last year his swing has gotten a lot better a lot more efficient he was playing really well in the fall came back in the spring was hitting huge pulls he's a left-handed player but he's pulling the ball right so we looked at his golf swing on video and, and we said something in his backswing and he came out and he actually was able to fix it quite quickly and it was looking really good and he's hitting some good shots and some big pulls and, and i look at him and go okay so you understand here that what we've all been doing is to clean up the swing so that we can have a better downswing right and he goes yeah absolutely I said, okay you're still kind of chopping across it like you normally do, even though I really don't have a reason for you to be doing that right now. How about we try swinging out for him to third base because, uh, you know, he's left-handed. And literally the first shot, he blocked it. Totally different ball flight. And I said, okay, tone it down a little bit, swing out to halfway between third and second. By the end of the session, for the first time ever, he was hitting draws off the with a driver. It's a neat way to think about it. Uh, place yourself at the plate of a baseball diamond and then try to make your club path go to whatever area of that diamond you want. Mm-hmm. You can hit a little pull cut. If you want to keep it low in the wind and you got a yeah. little left to right hole or whatever, just visualize the ball going to the place in the diamond or in the baseball field that you want it to. Right? I think it's great. I I just I know I was floored watching him do it because it changed so much just from understanding he should be trying to do that, especially with the driver that I think it's worth mentioning to people, you know, you want to swing out to the target, especially with a driver. As you say, you want to swing up and hit the ball up into the air like a volleyball player. You swing out in that direction. I think that's also a great thought to get you moving the right way through the golf ball and and stop trying to 
like we referenced earlier, right? Gorilla slam and hit the golf ball down as much as you, you know, can. I, I think taking a driver lesson is probably a really good idea. I was I gave a short game uh, camp. We'll, we'll wrap up here, Jake. We're getting a little long, I know. But I gave a short game camp yesterday, and I was talking to the guys about how important it was to work on their short game. And I basically, you know, kind of subdivided the game. And I said, look, putting's 25%. Statistically, statistically, it's higher than that because, but a lot of them are gimmies and tap ins and little short putts. So, twenty five percent of golf. Yeah, twenty five percent of golf is the driver, and once again, mm-hmm. you need that. Probably true. So, why not take a lesson on just the driver? It, it, it it's twenty five percent of the game, and then I said twenty five percent is around the greens, which means twenty five percent of the rest of the game is everything else almost. Like if you can get off the tee, if you can putt well, and hit anything from less than a full golf swing well if you've got a really accomplished short game. Hitting all of your other irons and your hybrids is part of the game, but I think we spend so much time, you know, hitting buckets and buckets and buckets on the swing. But if you understand the differences with the driver swing and work at it a bit and then clean up your short game a lot, wow, you'll hit the ball a lot better, notwithstanding the fact that if you work on your pitching motion, you'll probably hit a better iron swing anyway. That's true. Maybe consider booking a short game lesson and a driver lesson and kind of think at it from a little bit different perspective. So so here's a a question for you then, because that opens a bit of a Pandora's box. How much out of your practice time would you allocate to driver? So assuming we're hitting golf balls. Not a lot, but I'd allocate learning time to hitting the driver. Excellent. Okay. So I don't want a guy to hit 90 drives out of 100 because he's got to master that because then his timing and rhythms and everything might get out of whack and his balance, they're the biggest swings. So I'd rather he he, he work on synchronizing the arm swing and the body rotation and everything. But you need a lesson on how to stand over the driver and how to hit the driver for sure. Yeah, I agree with both those points. You know, I think it's easier to change your swing motions when you're using shorter clubs, so practice with those. But if you understand how to hit a driver, I agree with you completely. It's huge. Yeah. The, the Quickly before we wrap up, I mean, I, I thought I should ask you, you have so many drills, it's a joke. What are your favorite driver drills? Based on either what you saw this week or in general, what would you recommend most people try with the driver? I know I, I, know I have a couple, but... Well, I mean, I would consider what we just talked about a drill, talking about, you know, really setting up behind the golf ball and visualizing where they want to hit that ball. Uh, the trailing leg back drill is my favorite, where you would take your, for a right-handed player, your right foot and pull it about eight inches off the line yeah. and then turn into that leg and swing out at it. We always put alignment sticks down in the ground, not running parallel to where you want the shot to go, but out to the right a little bit again for a right-handed player. So turn into that back leg that's pulled off the line and then swing out, you know, along those into out alignment sticks. I do that a lot. What yeah, do you I know. have? What do you do? Well, I, also my favorite, I do that myself all the time. I mean, I, I'm a fade biased golfer. So whenever I'm having trouble, I do exactly what you just said. I pull my, from my case, right foot back as a right-handed player and hit a drive with that to get a feeling for it. I mean, I think that's the best driver drill just from a straight up most people's slicing standpoint. I also think, you know, trying to hit little half ones and try to shape the ball a little bit is a great idea. Yeah, that's fun, too. If you just tee it up and then swing back to your ribs and, and try to make good, clean contact. Really sweep the ball off the feel tee. Feel it. Yeah, feel it in a slow motion way. And try to pop it up in the air. Try to hit it up. Yeah. So you have to stay back and hit up. But you've got to have that spine tilt. You've got to be behind the ball with your lead ear. And if you just swing back to your ribs, even without that that back foot pulled off the line, you still can practice swinging up on the ball, popping it up in the air. You know right? the other one I found, fun. I found recently that I liked is put a head cover in front of the golf ball because subconsciously you won't want to hit your head cover, right? You'll feel like you have to swing up oh, over the it. head cover forward? a little bit. Where should the head cover be? Four inches in front of the ball. Um, I, I, you know, so the ball's teed up, so all you got to do is keep it level to... Like, not hit it. Yeah. Yeah, but it'll give you the feeling of, ooh, swing up above the head cover and, like and go it. over it, and like I think that, that that's another visual to try to help you swing up a little bit. Yeah, we do the opposite for people... Uh, who are lifting the newer players, if we want them to understand what a divot is, we'll put the golf ball on the turf and then put a piece of electric tape yeah. about four inches in front of it and say, we want you to hit the ball and the tape. In this case, to prove how different a driver swing is than an iron swing, we put the head cover there and then they have to hit, get their ball over the head cover, swing up over the head cover, and not bash the head cover. Yeah. Like it. Totally agree. All right, let's wrap it there.